from now on, I'm not worrying about you. I'll only worry about feeding myself. <laughs> Welcome back to Blame It, the podcast that takes a deep dive into the best worst horror films of the 80s and 90s. I'm Stevie, your VHS veteran. I hope you're all doing horrendously. A shout out to our new patrons, Ryan Molyneux, Joseph Russ, Richard Hyde, Oliver Cowart, Michael Stevenson, Adam Nahr, Brad Hansen, and Becky Dark. Hello there. Thank you guys so much. They are all supporting the show over on Patreon, and I am so grateful for you all. Speaking of Patreon, segue. Following last week's episode on Piranha with Louise Blaine, our discussion about Piranha 2, The Spawning, is now available to all patrons, as well as a back catalogue of bonus episodes about films like Stage Fright, The Critters franchise, Chud 2, and many more. This week we'll also see the release of the Rotters Reviews minisode about 1997's Anaconda, starring Jenny from the Block and Angelina Jolie's dad. So if you want to get in on the action, just head to patreon.com forward slash Stevie's Brain Rot. This week, I've convinced Tori Allen Martin to return after the listener favourite episode where we discussed the super fun Chopping Mall. This time, she's here to discuss one of the most pointless and bizarre exploitation movies to come out of the era. It's 1983's Microwave Massacre. It was actually filmed in the late 70s, but it took five years to find distribution. I wonder why. With boobs, cultural appropriation, and buckets of misogyny, this film has everything you never asked for. Well, it's a $75,000 movie called Microwave Massacre, so I guess you get exactly what you asked for. Please welcome back to the show, Tari Alimitek. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, for anyone who didn't get that, go back to the first episode Tori was on for Chopping Mall in season one, and there will be an explanation for that. Yep, yep. Um, how are you? I'm good, thanks, babe. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. You've got exciting things going on, right? Yeah, it's, been, it's just gone mad. So yeah. I'm not complaining because we can't because we sat on our asses for a year. Right. Um, but it's that typical thing, isn't it? Of like nothing, mm-hmm. but everything. Yeah. And course. then the world's doing this weird opening up thing. Um, and I'm like, well, I can't do anything because if I shut myself down after waiting for so long. <laughs> so I'm just sort of hovering around at home trying not to touch anyone in <laughs> yeah. constant fear of my stuff being shut down. So yeah. that's my life. <laughs> oh man, I think I'm just going to go on not touching anyone. Um, not for any uh, health reasons. Just, just, just because, quite liked it. Yeah, people aren't m- my favourite. <laughs> Why deal when you don't have to? The, yeah, yeah, and the ones I already know, that's fine. But yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't need to meet anyone else. Ever. No, I, no new friends is fine with me. Like You have to be yeah. a pretty exceptional human for me to be bothered <laughs> yeah, in the nicest right. possible way. Just because laughing brings so much pain, you know? Totally. It's like I, totally. Can, I don't know if I have the capacity to love any more people who could potentially hurt me. It's very yeah. exhausting. <laughs> it's time consuming and scary. Exactly. Love. <laughs> exactly. So let's just be recluses and blame yeah. the pandemic. Yeah. And say it's had a, a, a lasting psychological effect. Yeah. And now we I'm just sorry, can't. I just can't. Yeah. We just can't. I don't, full I don't stop. have the capacity for you. Sorry. <laughs> no. Sorry. Corona wiped it out. <laughs> Corona filled me perfect yeah deal done. um that's good uh so last time obviously we we chatted about uh chopping mall which yeah. is a lot of fun silly schlocky yeah i still think about it i was gonna ask that i was gonna <laughs> i was gonna ask 
it's, if it's left a lasting impression. It actually has left a lasting impression. <laughs> I I just had a really good experience. I just had a really good time with that film. Yeah, and it was an introduction to a genre that I that I did not know much about, and a, and a lovely time with you. So. Yeah, so the the good, bad, 80s schlocky sort of genre has its own highs and lows. Mm. Um, Now... (laughs) Mm, That's a nice segue. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) See what you did there. Slick. So we are going to be talking about a film called Microwave (laughs) Microwave Massacre from 1983. Mm. And I say 1983. um, You may think it feels much more sort of exploitative 70s vibe. And that's because it was filmed around 78, 79. uh, But no one would distribute it for like five years. Fair. I mean, I don't know why they did after five, to be honest. But okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. There's serious perseverance there. You'd give up after two years, wouldn't you, on that Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, it doesn't, whatever their qualms were about releasing it the five years previous, like prior, it it doesn't get better. Like it doesn't, (laughs) it doesn't age well that, do you know what I mean? I'm like, it's only going to get worse, guys. So why, if it was bad five years ago, it's probably even worse now, would be my guess. But okay. Um, I, maybe they had the foresight that in 35 years, we'll still be talking about it. Well, yeah, fair. <laughs> it's probably that. Um, before we actually talk about it, what what are your general thoughts on uh, Microwave Massacre? <laughs> How do you even begin there? <sighs> I know. My general thoughts. I mean, it's it's an interesting one, isn't it? I'm uh, perplexed, probably, which is, mm-hmm. which is a word we've discussed before. My yeah. my experience of human centipede three was I was slightly perplexed, yes. so definitely perplexed. I, I think it's pretty problematic some of the mm. views <laughs> that are <laughs> that are portrayed. Um, <laughs> and I don't really know what happened. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't overly know what happened in this in no. this film, and I don't think they do. And um, this is the second time I've seen it, and there were several things where I was thinking, hang on, why did I miss something? But I couldn't be asked to go back to see if I did. I yeah, just thought, fair. no, I'm going to let it carry on because I'm sure this won't be relevant anyway. It, yeah, it, I reckon it wasn't relevant and you would have wasted more time and still yeah. probably been even more confused. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And then I've watched it three times, yeah. uh, which no one needs to do. Nobody um, needs that. There is uh, a sequel that is in development. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and it is called <laughs> Microwave Massacre, Don't Go in the Oven. And now, one, that's just good advice. I mean, Don't yeah, go that's, in a, the oven. that's a general thing that I hope you've learned by the time you're like a toddler, at least. Yeah, it's it's more of a public service announcement, mm. that, isn't it? Um, but it doesn't currently have a writer attached or a director. Oh, right. Or a producer or a cast. It is just in production. <laughs> So I right. don't know what okay. that means. I'd, yeah, it's, it's an interesting take. But I don't understand who uploaded that. They must be one of those things. But anyway, yeah. Mm, I, I want to see Potentially it. all of them. Potentially they're good. They they plan to be all of those things. Would be my guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm going to read the little IMDb synopsis, and then I just want to hear your your version, your hot take. Yeah, that for once isn't four pages long. It's a paragraph. Oh, that was wonderful, though. <laughs> and Pete, I got I got um, responses from people who did hang around at the end to listen to your five minute synopsis. <laughs> and how did they feel? They said it was bang on the money. Oh, thank you, diehard yeah. fans. I'll pay them yeah. later. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, okay, so it says, fed up of his wife's bad cooking. Mm. That's also debatable. Donald kills her and turns to cannibalism to satisfy his appetite. Bless you lot. <laughs> Now that's the film I want to watch. Yeah, but that makes it seem really like, oh, no harm, no foul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> makes sense. standard Tuesday evening, isn't it? Yeah, totally. Mine's not dissimilar. Mine mm. is Donald, a disgruntled, hapless middle-aged man in an unhappy marriage with wife May, whose cooking he hates, kills her in a fit of rage after she says she will only feed herself in the future. His murder <laughs> weapon is a salt and or pepper shaker, I couldn't wear that out. <laughs> and he then places her in the microwave before slow boiling her in it and eating her for the foreseeable. This gives him a taste of a cannibalism. And so the rampage begins. Nice. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's it for anyone who hasn't seen it. Uh, in a nutshell. Yeah. 
that is it in a nutshell. However, what it contains are some <laughs> very questionable gags, some wonderfully Oof. delicate appropriation. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, let's, let's, let's take the ride. Let's take everyone on this journey. Let's go there. Uh, First of all, I have to say the cold open of the giant microwave and the lights come on and there's a decomposing head inside. Uh, it's not the head that we then see again throughout the film. So no. I don't know what happened there. I don't know if suddenly after wrapping or maybe within the five year hiatus, mm. they, they got hold of a better head. and thought, Better well, head. Let's do that. Uh, so mm. the proper opening uh, is just boobs and bum in it. I mean, yeah, it's... Sh- it- Full on blonde strut tits and ass. Yeah, I did sort of it's... laugh. I was like, "Of course he's given me this one," because obviously <laughs> we discussed a lot of the tits and blonde hair in the in the in the previous one. Yeah. So I was like, As "Of course theme. he's shoved this misogynistic pile of <laughs> wank on me to deal with." Um, the problem is though that's that's not me being really selective. It's that's pretty much eighty percent of them. Yeah. Okay, fair, fair. Okay, beggars can't be choosers. Um, yeah, but that did make me laugh. I was like, oh, here we go. Here we are. Here and we it's go. Boom, 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 yeah, boom. <laughs> it's intense. I mean, she looks great, but it's yeah. it's a lot. And then I was like, oh, it's cut against a construction site. So I'm like, this isn't going to end. Where, like, where are we going yeah. here? Um, and then I get to the point where I've said, why is she mm. rubbing her tits in a hole? It's very peculiar, isn't it? Because there's a building site which is obviously blocked off by yeah. all those, you know, that temporary, um, temporary wall, mm-hmm. and yet there's a hole, and mm-hmm. she can't help herself. She lifts up a top, gets the tits through it, and it's not just like wiggle, hello boys. No, no. she's humping the wall, yeah, slamming herself into it, slamming into it, and I don't understand. Like they've honestly done it in a way like you get joy and pleasure masturbating your breasts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you know what I mean like that that's how right. I, like, I feel like somebody's missed a memo somewhere and they're yeah. like you know give a woman an orgasm just <laughs> rub her breasts up against a wall I like that's what they seem to think's happening <laughs> that's not happening for me but yeah because she's getting off on it more than the guys yeah she's like on the other side of the wall going oh, oh. oh yeah and then she's yeah. like oh so yeah. somebody's missed a memo somebody was not listening in sex education you know definitely they're yeah. like how do you make a baby tits like it's <laughs> do you know what i mean okay. it comes in the middle of the tits doesn't it yeah yeah she's like rubbed her and then like bang <laughs> bob's your uncle daddy's your aunt got a baby woman's please <laughs> yeah it's interesting now the mm. original opening for this right was may who we meet later on yeah. uh, and she was going to be shopping in a shopping mall and all of the items she takes off the shelf would have the credits on so it's a directed by starring which is a really cute That's little thing cute. And it's her walking around so they actually for that it was one of the most expensive setups because they had to hire out this supermarket they had to set up a rig and they hired a dolly to use the camera on instead of having it on someone's shoulder and um an hour before the supermarket pulled out and it make, and they oh, must no. have done this well ahead of time. And it makes me think, so, whoever said, okayed it only read the script. Like, those people are coming this morning. Oh, shit, yeah, what is this again? And then, like, <laughs> hang on. I, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to pull the plug on this one. But they're, they're in the parking lot. Yeah, no, bolt the door. Oh. Uh, so then they were like, oh, the, so the, uh, the director and the producer were like, fuck, what do we do then? Tits and ass? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a good alternative. They'll do it. Definitely makes sense. So there, oh, shit, that's the what bed. we ended up with. That was quite a cool opening. I feel like that was an omen and it was all downhill from, from that moment that the supermarket yeah. pulled out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, when we get to it later, it's a it's a common story that it, it seems a lot of people just suddenly didn't turn up for things. <laughs> and so like producers had to jump in and oh like there's the guy we see in the the sort of nympho neighbor and we see him through the window and he's dressed in lingerie yeah yeah so that is the writer producer <laughs> because the guy who agreed to do it again on the day just didn't show up just again show i think up. he he read it on on the bus on the way probably. and he said i can't do this and i don't <laughs> know why i'm in this because there's no relevance to us having kinky neighbor sex it doesn't go anywhere. That's something I wondered the whole way through. I was like, what is the relevance? Yeah. It, no, we it don't... never becomes relevant. 
<laughs> we don't get an answer to that at all. No. Uh, but we do now meet May, who, who is we Donald's do. wife. Um, thoughts? I mean, I, she's 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 big in her performance, isn't she, May? She... This is actually her only screen credit. Oh. <laughs> Claire Ginsberg, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing before, nothing, nothing after. Nothing after, yeah. No. Um, it felt pretty theatrical <laughs> for, for me. Yeah. Um, it was she she committed. She, sorry, my cats are going mental. If you can hear that, can you? No, mommy's, it's fine. Mummy's working. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, I I loved Napoleon the dog. Yes. Yes. Uh, I also thought it was the biggest microwave oven I have ever seen. <sighs> hmm. I in thought my you might life. Say that. Mm. is that a thing it, right so <laughs> well, yes and no so the one that she has just bought mm. is an industrial microwave yeah. so microwaves were actually first created and demonstrated in the late 40s but they were only available to companies and right. big mass producing places and um science labs basically and so they became available to the general public in the late 60s and they were big not this big no Um, and also in the 70s they were the equivalent of like three grand now what you'd pay so they weren't not Mm. only the poshest sort of people in the upper class had them and so then at this point where we are which is 1979 they were much closer to the size we have now uh, still super expensive. So I don't know why it's that big. You'd think <laughs> it's so that they could get a whole person's body in there for a great shot, but yeah. they never do that. No, no, so they just have ba- bad plastic prosthetic the same, cut up the same things arms. constantly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's your history on the microwave anyway. Thank you for that. Yeah, you'll never forget that you now. You learn something new every day with you, yeah. don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Microwave uh, Oscar, history of the microwave. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get something out of it. Well, um, yeah. So Donald, yeah, we mentioned him, who's played by Jackie Vernon, who was a mm, he was a comedian to mm. some people. I mean, he called himself a comedian. <laughs> He he did he did stand up uh, and he was appeared on a, a, a few sort of TV shows and stuff. Right. Uh what are your thoughts on him then? I mean, he's an interesting one, isn't he? Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I have lots of thoughts moving through. Partly, yeah. it was you know, I was I, it was really questionable for me that he was so successfully picking up all these women. I was well. See, I was going to ask you about this and go, "Am I missing something?" Is no. It something from the you're, female perspective, no. You're not missing anything. Ah, okay. I mean, I think the creators of the film were missing something and got that horribly wrong, probably because he was very involved in the film and yes. the making of it and wanted to believe that he was appealing in any way, shape or form. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I mean, because the thing is, it's not ov- obviously, personally, he's not my jam. He's not <laughs> who I'd want to take home to mum. Sure. But that's, you know, that's me. That's my Each personal taste. However, beyond that... He's just a terrible human being, you know, <laughs> who's like misogynistic, can't do anything for himself, grumpy, selfish, black, like bad tempered. So I'm just like on every level here. Oh, oh yeah. And let's not forget a cannibal. So on, <laughs> on every single level, I'm like, what, is, what, why is this man appearing to be some prize who's having sex with all these pretty attractive women and then killing them? Yeah, I mean, the red flags are there, aren't they? I mean, massively, babe. Just don't go yeah. home with him. He's gross. No. But yeah, he's he's not a bit of me, Donald. I did <laughs> wonder as well, the crab sandwich at the beginning. I was like, are we supposed to think that crab is real? <laughs> So yeah, so this is uh, this is the beginning of his sort of mental downfall, isn't it? So his wife May, who we've just met, is really into fancy food like veal and crab. So she's given him a crab sandwich, mm. and to be fair, she's put a full crab in two bits of bread, and I mean unshelled. Yeah, just a whole crab. Like, yeah, she just picked that up off the beach. So I get that. That's annoying mm. clearly they've done that plastic crab just so we can get the gag from one of the other workers saying oh i remember crabs in the army <laughs> and it's like oh really <laughs> that really sets up what we're what we're in for yeah that the gives you a good indica- indication of where this is going 
yeah, Donald pretty much only speaks in one-liners. And mm. halfway through the film, he suddenly decides to start breaking the fourth wall and looking at the camera. Yeah, I've got that down. It. It's around the death time. He just turns to the camera and I'm like, okay, cool. We're doing that now. We're in on this. Okay, yeah. so we're doing this. Like, cool. great. Good to know. But you can't introduce that halfway through. That's no. something you'd have to set up. You'd have to set up, especially at that <laughs> moment. Because it's not, and it's not even as he kills her. It's like probably... 20 seconds before he does, he yeah. stares at the camera and I'm like, right? Okay. Uh, oh, hello. <laughs> is this a, a we? Am I here? <laughs> am I doing this? And then it and then it stops for a bit and then it comes back. There's no there's no rhyme or reason. It's not like, oh, it's about to kill someone. Now mm-hmm. we're in. And then we stay yeah. on that journey for no, no. It's just random moments mm-hmm. that Donald decides to break the fourth <laughs> wall because he can. <laughs> apparently and um they pretty much only had one take which you can tell one take on every scene pretty much right okay yeah actually one of the women he takes home clearly fluffs her lines at one point and they just carry on and i thought oh, that's <laughs> fine okay it's scheduling cool um talking about the one-liners so as always he and his workmates they head to the strip club for a drink after work as you and do as he's walking into the strip club he goes hmm I can't remember the last time I had something good to eat. And he opens the door <laughs> and he's, he's faced with a crotch, yeah. a, a, a lady's crotch, because she stood on a stool fixing mm. a light. And uh, it doesn't stop there. That's that's the no. level we stay on. That's a pretty good indication. Yeah. Also, if his wife never makes him anything good to eat anymore. Okay, firstly... By looking at you, no offence, you're not going without food. Yeah, that's a lie. Secondly, yeah. Secondly, here's an idea. Make your own fucking lunch. I mean, that that was my overriding thought the whole the whole time. And I'm like, I've, I, one of my notes is he needs to learn to cook, but instead he resorts to dog food and bread. That's another th- like, thing. He, he is more willing to put dog food in bread than just mm-hmm. like, <laughs> he, he drives a car, yeah? Just mm-hmm. drive to the fucking Store. supermarket you absolute weirdo <laughs> and pick up i don't know maybe just get some ham even some spam if that's your vibe <laughs> that was big in the 70s wasn't it just go and get that or maybe a banana packet of crisps i don't care but i mean <laughs> just go in there it's not it's not like you have to even cook to eat do you know what i mean dog well, food isn't the only thing that doesn't need to be cooked to be no eaten. it's like it's really really batshit behavior and then beyond that as if that's not mental enough that he's decided to resort to eating dog food rather than just cooking for himself or <laughs> buying something really meant he then thinks oh i know i'll just start murdering people and eating them which again i think is a lot more effort than just going to the store <laughs> to the day do you know what i mean <laughs> just go and buy a chicken breast <laughs> don't need a real woman's one Oh, Matt. <laughs> God, it's exhausting, oh. Donald. It makes me wonder if he was maybe a little bit, he was sick before this happened. I think this was you going think? to happen. <laughs> 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 this was like, this was burgeoning. Uh, so this, yeah. when we go back and May is preparing uh, uh, the veal meal, and right, this is a, a little insight into my brain and what happens. So, okay. She's singing to herself as she's preparing mm-hmm. dinner, right? Mm-hmm. And she's singing Frere Jacques. Mm-hmm. But she sings it like this. Frere Jacques, Frere Jacques, <laughs> Dormes Vus, Dormes, Dormes Vus. Vus. <laughs> and so this is how my brain goes. Right. Uh, I have two issues with this. Okay. Uh, one, you idiot. Mm. Two, I think it's safe to say she doesn't speak French. And so, yeah, that would be, yeah, my hunch right. too. So she won't have learned this song from reading it, where, yes, the words have silent S's and Z's. Yeah. yeah. So, but you learn Frere Jacques by By ear. hearing it. Yeah. yeah. So either she's deliberately being a tit <laughs> or the person she learned it off was a tit. Was a tit. Because you wouldn't do it how it's written. Yeah. No, I don't think anyone learned Frere Jacques reading it, did they? Apart no. from maybe like a French person. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And they wouldn't pronounce the S and Z. Frere's Jackers. <laughs> Dormez Vus. <laughs> but actually, she does get it wrong after that. She says, Dormez Vus. London Bridge is falling down. <laughs> does she actually say that? Yeah. So, um, so whoever ta- I think whoever taught her nursery rhymes was a, a right a joker. A dick. 
Yeah. I love that that's where your brain went, though, with everything else going on. That's what you decided to. Yeah. To I missed the next few minutes. Yeah. Thinking about that. How has that information mistranslated yeah. that she thinks that's how you sing it? How did we get there? Hmm. I, I mean, <laughs> if you want to go proper deep on it and give the film loads of meaning that it doesn't have, it mm. th- that maybe. <laughs> that was the decision they were like do you know what this this is going to show how annoying she is as a person that she purposefully sings it wrong all right just to like because maybe donald thinks like that and he's like why are you putting the s's and z's in she's like it's how i learned it and he's like no one learns it like that because you'd have to maybe that's actually what she's doing she's driving him nuts Mm. but all uh, this is now see my brains off on one now later on though when he's coming home before he comes in the door, you hear him going, hmm, hmm, Yeah, he hmm, hums hmm. it. Mm. So what's happening there? Is it like the family? It's the family <laughs> it jam. Like... Maybe it was their wedding song. Where's that first dance? <laughs> <laughs> Rare Something very weird there. Maybe he taught it to her. <laughs> and he taught that. it to her wrong to make her look like a dick because he hates her. Yeah, well, I think you've nailed it. It's that or... It's the only song that they don't have to pay rights for. And if they sing it wrong, they definitely don't have to pay Typically. rights. Because they can be like, it's not Frere Jacques, it's Frere Jacques. <laughs> <laughs> it's Frere Jacques. It's a completely Frere's different ja- song, actually. And what is it? I think seven notes is like yeah, where it begins. Yeah, so they, if you really pay attention, she probably sings a sixth note, like slightly <laughs> sharp or flat away. And then into London really... Bridge is falling down. Yeah. Okay. We've, we've cracked it. We've cracked That's what it. it is. That's what it I is. I knew we'd get, this is why I got you on. I knew you'd help me with that. And um, their relationship though is, I mean, it's pretty dodgy. Terrible. She says to him, yeah. you're a walking contraceptive. <laughs> I thought that was quite a good insult. Might back that's pocket that one. That's actually not bad. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to bust that out. You're a walking contraceptive. Oh, yeah, that's, that's all right. Some of them are really sort of convoluted and long-winded, his, his one-liners though, where I'm like, oh, uh, hang on, that's, ah? that doesn't <laughs> slip off the tongue, that one, does it? <laughs> But he has this fantasy that he's holding a samurai sword uh, mm, and he mm, goes to kill her, mm, but he snaps out of it to reveal he's holding a newspaper. And mm, also, did you notice he, he's got a plaster on his nose, like yeah, a Band-Aid? Yeah. Why? In this scene. Oh, no, I was going to ask you. Mm, <laughs> I reckon he just probably has a spot. That day mm, on set. Yeah. Because he's not wearing it. Because he's not in scenes. any other scenes, and we don't. And like... let's see, he was an idiot with that samurai sword. What the imaginary one? And he's, but he's yeah. But when they actually filmed stuff. it, maybe he actually nipped yeah. it because he got carried away, and they didn't have. They were like, we just don't have the time. So yeah, just put a plaster just... on it and crack on, <laughs> and we'll, do, we'll right sort now. it in the edit, and then they didn't have money to like <laughs> yeah. color it out. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. I uh, thought we'd get more of an answer, but that's fine. Sorry um, about that's, that. That's one of the moments I've been where I was like, oh, I must have missed when this happened. Should I go back? No, I'm not going to go back. No, no, you didn't miss anything. That's just, right, how, just... That's just how it is, Steve. Just... All right. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> um, so, but then we get Boob Girl. She's back on the building site. She can't keep away. And uh, she just walks in and struts around asking the guys, hey, what are you building? And I want to know, because this is like, she frequents this building site. Now, what's her end game? Like, does she have a job or why does she spend so much time trespassing on building sites? Mm, she does say, I've always been so fascinated about what men can do. Okay. So uh, I think <laughs> <laughs> it's her fascination. Men in action. With the things that men can do. <laughs> okay, Steven. that's very broad, isn't it? Yeah. That right. brought her to the construction site. Uh, uh. And she was like, this is... It's really going to feed my fascination with what men can do. <laughs> Not much, apparently, because nothing is being built. No, they just laze around talking about food or eating crabs or whatever else they're yeah. doing or talking about <laughs> crabs or talking about sort of broadly racial things. Yeah. I, like, yeah, I, I've also written who was she shagging to get the part because it was some, it was, it was questionable acting. I've got to yeah. be honest. But also, if th- remember, the opening scene uh, wasn't meant to be her. They added that because of the cancel bit. So I wonder if this was all quite unplanned, just having having her. And they were like, maybe, yeah, they just wrote that in the morning. Like, we'll just have mm. a woman. I think it pro- Maybe <laughs> one of them the was shagging her and they were like, oh, I'll just get my girlfriend down. She'll, she'll fill in for us. It seems something like that, doesn't it? Did you pick up on this bit where... 
they beckon over the muscle guy that she thinks really hot. Oh yeah, he, the gay one. Has, <laughs> yeah, and he has an asthma attack when he yeah, sees he her gets, boobs. He gets a and then he gets a rash. He's like, you know, I yeah. get a rash, which is a lovely, delicate um, homosexual joke. And uh, yeah, later on, they confirm it because when he's getting lunch, he goes, "Oh, big thick dog, my favorite meat." And I was like, "Okay, just confirming that for us." Mm. So yeah, so the uh, the gay guy is allergic to boobs. To we boobs. are, by the way, though. Like, oh no, I, of I, course. I, I, yeah, if I'm ten feet with. 10 feet from a mammary um, up in hives. I mean, like, even now you asked me to make sure mine weren't in the, um, in the shop yeah, yeah, because in the shop. You'd, you'd be thrown. You'd have to be sick. Yeah, go blind. Yeah, no, I know. I know. For God's sake. No, um, I, I, I thought it was really good to see that um, delicately handled representation. I thought it was really important. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. thought, oh, yeah, Stevie must feel so seen by this film. Yeah, it was really progressive. Yeah, you must really go, oh, God, they've really nailed me there. They've really they've really got into my psyche and what makes me tick. <laughs> also, she, she, like, she complains when she sat down saying, oh, men only want one thing. And mm. I'm sorry, but like, I am a feminist and all, but the first thing she did was stick her boobs through the wall and hump it. Well, yeah. And now she's hmm. just lurking around trespassing. construction site, trespassing, saying, I want that one because he's got big muscles. So, hello, Pot. I'm Kettle. <laughs> Have a day off. <laughs> She's a bit of a dick. She also goes, do you think I'm a nice person? And I've written yeah. it. Who wrote this? Because, like, I'm just like, how would anyone even know? Like, what, what, what even is that question? How He's known you for all of 10 seconds and you've, you're have half naked on a building site picking out his gay mate and gi- giving him an asthma attack. And I don't, like, I don't know if you're a nice person. I do, probably not, no. <laughs> yeah, by what I've seen, if I had to take a pun. No, no, you're not. And she gives him well easy and she snogs him after about two seconds. And he also <laughs> says, come on and plant yourself a while, wild flower. <laughs> that's what that's what he does, and she's like, mm, "Do you think I'm a nice person?" He's like, "Well, yeah, shucks or whatever." And then they're like, la, 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 la. "Tongue yeah. sandwich." Yeah. Oh, Donald needs to go read a bit of that. It's n- yeah, it's not, it's not okay. I've also written here twenty one minutes in, and I'm waiting for the massacre. Mm. I feel mm. I'm getting close. I also we went past something that I have to bring up. It's to do with go May. On. Yes. <laughs> she mm. turned the lights out. To light the candles. Yes. Why? I know. I In know. what world do you go, I want to light a candle? I know. Let me deal Lights with a first. naked flame in the dark. <laughs> what was the logic for me there? And she fucks that up. She royally. fucks it up so bad. Yeah, you're right. You light them and then you turn you off the lights. You light them, then you turn off the lights. You, do, you don't go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let me strike this match in darkness over a <laughs> pail of alcohol or whatever she freaking yeah. does. It yeah. was a really, I was like, why is the film dark? And then I was like, <laughs> okay, now I know why it went dark and I'm even more confused than I was <laughs> before it went. Like, ah, it was a really, it was a real moment. So that you were still thinking about Frere Jacques, at, that's why. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I was unpicking it. that. Yeah. I'm worrying about the darkness in the candles. Yeah, because he's come back drunk mm. then. And he has mm. a little bit of a meltdown, doesn't he? He pours soil <laughs> all over the house, mm. and spits on his wife. <laughs> it's really bad. Yeah, he spits water out. Um, oh, yeah, I've also written. Oh, yeah, I've got a lot on this bit. So okay. I've got um, May gives it huge acting. She's very large, I've written. I don't mean uh-huh. physically, I mean in her no. choices. Then I've written, when he spits water in her food, they should really, in capital letters, get a divorce. Then I've said, <laughs> he wrecks the house. At this point, I genuinely think she should kill him. I was kind of hoping yeah. she was going to kill him. And then she says, this actually happens, Donald, there is something bothering you, isn't there, as he pees <laughs> On the fireplace. In the fire. <laughs> and I've written again who wrote this. And then I've said all of this because of the food. Literally go to McDonald's mm. is what I've written. One handy. And then it says he randomly breaks the fourth wall and looks at us. Yeah. It's yeah. a bizarre experience this two minutes. Yeah. And then when she says, I'll only worry about feeding myself, he decides to kill her. And I've said, mm. I, I don't think that was the worst of it. Like, I, you know, like earlier she's like, you're a walking contraceptive. Yeah, you know, yeah, she yeah. said worse to him. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've, they've, they've been through it in this relationship. They're absolutely awful to each other. But then she's like, well, I'll only feed myself, which I don't think is that bad if he hates her cooking. So but rather it, than just go McDonald's, yeah, he kills her. I think it's the straw that broke the camel's back. Or it's not. It's, it's just. I think it's the build up. I I understand this, Stevie, but I still think it's normally it goes to the jugular a bit more, doesn't it? Yeah, and and I suppose it is kind of what he wants to not be fed by her. That's what I mean. So why kill mm. her on that line? Yeah, I'd see the like veal freaking thing being put down and flip then be like what is this bah! not okay i'll just feed myself then you don't we won't have to eat my shit food okay great win-win yeah also i don't see the problem with the veal because i understand the crab yeah i mean that was yeah but, although he could have just broken the shell couldn't he yeah i guess but it's they just shouldn't be together they shouldn't basically. stevie and, but the thing is, he beats her with a, uh, as you said, salt or pepper mill. He he breaks halfway to like season her a little bit and then mm -hmm. carry on. So it's like he already has the foresight that he's probably going to be gonna sampling her. her skin. Yeah, mm. yeah. But also he's drunk. Remember, and he wakes up. And he wakes up hungover. He goes to the microwave, opens it, forgets, <laughs> and she's in there. Mm -hmm. But this moment, obviously, they've got the actress sort of sat on a stool mm. sort of with Chilling. her head yeah with her head sort of frozen in a scream <laughs> and she's slightly wobbling and she's trying not to blink <laughs> trying to be the disembodied head mm. it's absolutely brilliant and then he's just like mm -hmm. mm. yeah, and then carries on Turns it on. Turns it on, boils her. Yeah and then he's chopped her up and he's <laughs> put her in loads of little um Tim foil into the freeze fridge but mm. when he comes down for a snack later he picks up one of the wrong ones he thinks he's getting a sandwich or something uh but it turns out he's chewing one of her hands one and yeah hands thus, thus a cannibal on. is born yeah it just works for him quite well it's surprisingly easy for him to just chew the flesh as well isn't it yeah yeah it doesn't seem very tough mm -mm. i also wondered you know when he i don't really know what happens with napoleon after that but as he kills her What's Napoleon doing running on the spot? Did you clock that? It's the, I, I screamed. It's amazing. <laughs> like Scooby Doo. Just I don't know how running it on did it. the spot for like no, just this random cutaway. It's a Napoleon running on the spot. It's the weirdest it's thing. Incredible. Literally, his feet are going men like yeah, running, and but he's not he's moving. He's not getting anywhere. Just it's amazing. Stuck there. They must have got that by mistake of thought. Oh, we've we got have to, to put, put that this in. in. Somewhere. Yeah, I feel like they were on lunch and they were like, just film that weird dog. And then they're like, yeah, shove it in there. I do love that dog. I love that dog. It's the best thing in it. Should have yeah. won an award, that dog. What are you drinking? Uh, Diet Coke. Mm, Why? Just it's really refreshing. Do <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? I was like, oh, I want one of them. Yeah, it's the summer, isn't it? Yeah, love a Diet Coke. Other colas are available. Mm. Um, Pepsi Max is my favourite. Oh, yeah, really? I know a lot of people feel like that. It's got caffeine in it as well, so it gives you like a wah. But it, I think it makes me feel like I'm in school because that's what I used to have at school. Oh, that's why. In the then. canteen. I've just yeah. had Diet Coke with vodka so much that now right. I almost just kind of taste vodka when I have a Diet Coke. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just like, oh, am I drinking it? You know, in the morning, like, what's going on? <laughs> that's that's weird. That association, isn't mm. it? Where, the, the one for me is, you know, an air freshener like Oust or something. Yeah. To me, immediately smells of shit because it covers up yeah. shit. If, yeah, no, no, I feel even you. Even if no one's taken one, if you come in and oust the room, I literally can Blah, taste feces. Poo. I'm like, oh my god, that smells of shit. Yeah, just because of that association. No, I feel you. I feel you. That's my Mental. situation with Diet Coke. It will always just taste like vodka. <laughs> Brains, eh? Weird, right? Yeah, really weird. Okay. Brains are mental, nice, aren't they? That was a nice interlude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all go, all just go and get your fizzy pop poo and vodka. <laughs> Have a poo, poo and get vodka. your fizzy pop. Come on back. <laughs> um, welcome back to the show. Um, so he um, he's back at the strip club, but he meets, meets a sex worker outside. Who, this yeah. Is, now, this is... Um, this is a cutting. This is the thing, right? So she breaks her heel. Oh, yeah. This is outrageous. He, and he says to her, it's because you're not used to being upright. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
and that somehow attracts her to him because she goes with him. Mm. He also says to her, you're prettier in the dark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Which I was like, sorry, who do you think you're talking to? Yeah. You minging right? old cannibal prick. <laughs> Come again, mate. Are you all right? Do you, you need to lie down? Like that. <laughs> Outrageous. And she's just like, huh, kind of thing. Like, she shouldn't really. I'd be like, okay, prick. Yeah. Because obviously she need, she wants, still wants to get the work. So she just takes that shit. No, it's not okay. No. It's but she goes okay. back anyway. And, she does um, go back. She's uh, just in her underwear. And he's acting very strangely. Uh, and he yeah. kind of doesn't want to have sex with her until she... Right. Tell, I don't get the logic of this. So when she says she's hungry, that makes him horny. So he bangs her and smothers her with a sunflower. Mm, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's, I mean... That's all I've got what, to say about that. Why not? Full <laughs> stop. Moving on. I actually thought that um, when she I first saw her, I thought it was Melanie Griffiths for a hot minute. <laughs> And I was like, how did they get her? Yeah, I thought it was something she'd done. Can you imagine? You know, when she was like 17, that she deeply regrets or whatever. I honestly <gasps> thought that was her. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. oh, also. Different kind of working girl. Do you know what I mean? Also, <laughs> when he says, what's your name? And she says, DDD. My mother oh, wanted yeah. to make me Delilah, but she stuttered. <laughs> That's a really good line. What? <laughs> well, and they wrote it down, right? That's her name. Like. <laughs> Best of I was literally like, is this real life? I mean, it's not, but you know what I mean? What's uh, your name? DDD. My mother wanted to make me Delia, but she stuttered. Uh, and then we just move on. Of course we do. And, no, and then I think it's very quiet, but she even says something about um, getting, do you want to be in 3D? Oh. Do you want to be seen in 3D? That's it. Yeah. Something like that. Oh. So they, it's just one after another. Oh, really. God. And also when, when he's smothered her, he says, uh, "Oh, I'm so un- I'm so hungry. I could eat a whore." I wrote that one down. That is, I mean, that was the moment, wasn't it? <laughs> that really was. I just. She also, as she lies there dead, she's definitely still breathing. You can see her mm-hmm. tummy like full on moving. <laughs> Fantastic! Like, only one, they only get one take. Remember? Yeah, I mean, she did it. She did her best, but I'm like, maybe just zoom in somewhere because, like, her stomach and her like hand on her stomach definitely moving up and down like that's <laughs> definitely happening so she's 100 percent not dead yeah and i don't know it, does he there's a weird very quick shot where he's making a giant human sandwich he's like buttering the body with a giant knife mm. and then puts a giant piece of bread where he where got, did he get that bread no idea from and the knife mm. The knife is butter knife, but it's 40 times bigger Massive. than it's meant to be. And it's not like they had Amazon in those days, you know, where you could just like <laughs> right. Google weird shit and get it sent to the house. Uh, it's just obviously there's whatever they can get their hands on. They just put it in. Dog yeah. running on the spot. Cool. We've got a giant bit of bread. Yeah, get it. <laughs> We've got a chicken chicken outfit. We've got a All chicken right, outfit. A yeah, we'll put a girl in it. But I'd also, meanwhile, we can't let, we must not forget that next door are just relentlessly having sex with everyone throughout this for no apparent reason. We'll just have random cutaways to them having sex with another stranger. Yeah. And then we go back to the house. But she'll like lock eyes with Donald and look him up and down. So we think something's going to come later. But, but no, it, no. It, it, it does doesn't. not. And as if she'd ever, she's fit and she, I mean. Yeah. She, and she's yeah. having sex with everyone on the block. She doesn't need Donald. Like she's no. all right. Also, this is a point that I made, right? I think this is just before he's killed the prostitute Mm -hmm. because this is what, so these are some main notes, yeah. And I'm like, so he can't remember killing her, which we've discussed apparently. Mm. And then now this is where he starts breaking the fourth wall. And from this point on, he keeps looking at us at random points that make no (laughs) sense, right? And so this is happening. So I feel very shooketh, you know, because I'm trying to mind my own business and he keeps looking at me and he's a cannibal, right, at this point. So, and then I'm like, but all of a sudden he can work the microwave. So why That's a point. didn't he just do that in the first place mm. and put a bit of ham in it or something? So I'm like, there's all this fuss and he's like mad stressed because he can't eat. And I'm like, but now you can slow boil. So yeah, you know. couldn't you just bought a beef steak and be... Been done with it 
got a ham. And I've also written, at this point, I don't know what this film is about and why it was made. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fair. Mm. I think it's a very, very fair and thing to And then on. I've said, when he has, oh, well, yeah, May's head and how obviously fake it is, I've just written, lol. That's um, hilarious because it's felt. It's made of felt and it's got googly eyes on it's it. It's outrageous. It's like, oh, are we supposed to think that's her? Because it's not. And it's green. It's just, everything about it's wrong. Um, and then he leaves the ring on, doesn't he, on her hand, which I'm like, yes. oh, that'll become important. Does it? No, absolutely no, not. No, no significance. Not. Um, and then I've also written, when he starts eating her, it's actually disgusting. Um, and yeah. I've also said he has random bursts of sadness and guilt and then continues to eat her, which was quite interesting to watch. That was very strange, wasn't it? Yeah, when out of nowhere. Yeah. Interesting choice. Um, mm. And then I said, when he puts her whole hand on the skewer, he's moving mad. <laughs> yeah, the shish kebab. <laughs> like, what is that? I mean, at least, cut, what are you doing? Just that bang on the skewer. Yeah, because that's not fucking obvious. Yeah. And uh, plus, that's I think that's the third of May's hands is used at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got a lot so, of hands, old May. Yeah, she really has. <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. He should have been having sex with her. She's got all those hands. She could have given him a lovely crying. time. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but the, uh, this street performer, so she's dressed as a chicken and she sounds sort of Eastern European. Do. I've just written what is happening at this point. Oh, yeah, right. This is when you're really like worried about your own sanity, mm-hmm. isn't it, watching it? I'm um, not that because... kind of chicken, she says. Yes, yes. I it's thought you lines. were a leg man, not a breast man. Uh... But how he somehow convinces her to leave her job, she's a street performer, mm. leave leave there, come home with him, strip naked and let him shake her on the couch so that her boobs jiggle. Yeah. Like he, <laughs> that seems to be all he wants to do. That's what she she does on like a Thursday afternoon with yeah. Donald. That's That was my issue. I'm like, <laughs> you know, the prostitute, fine, like a job's a job, right? Yeah, but, yeah. But the chicken woman... There's no need for her to have made this terrible decision. And left. she actually left her mates and the instruments there and she just yeah. like upped and left. She's asking for trouble. She is asking for trouble. She needs to go to therapy because she's clearly got some problems. <laughs> but it's too late because now she's dead. I think her life has just been bad choice after bad choice. Evidently, she's in a chicken costume. <laughs> and now she's gone home with Donald. It's not going well for her, is it? Jeez. Oh, she, he nearly gets caught, though, because Evelyn, May's sister, comes banging on the door like, I can't get in touch with my sister. Where is she? And he sets up um, May's head in the bed to make it look like she's sleeping. And she falls for it. <laughs> right. I mean, that's the best part. She's like, yeah. oh, poor May. I'm like, sorry, sorry that's a, look, that's look a at felt it. head. <laughs> are you OK? With a shake and go wig. Do you know what I mean? Uh, are you all right, Evelyn? Uh, yeah, but bless her, she pulls back the covers, I think. So he doesn't kill her, though. He stuffs a stale baguette in her mouth, ties her up. Because and he's like, I can't eat her because she's old. Oh, yeah. He's literally God. like, Ugh. Like, they, they even get misogyny in there. They're like, <laughs> he's like, the thought of eating her makes him hurl because he only wants to eat hot young women. Wow. The actual audacity of this man. <laughs> He's moving. He's selective mad. about his cannibalism. He's outrageous. Like he's even a sexist, horrible, nasty, ageist, misogynist in in his murdering. <laughs> like it's really hitting new levels for me. It, it, yeah, it's rough. Oh, and then you're like, oh, we must be near the end, and you are. But then we're suddenly in a doctor's office, and it's Doctor Von Der Fool. Wonderful. I didn't even notice that. That's wonderful. Doctor Wonderful. Oh, there you go. Very That's good. wonderful. Very uh, good. So he's he's fitted Donald with a pacemaker. Now I'm I'm pretty sure mm. pacemakers don't get fitted at the doctor's office on the day you pop in for a checkup. I'm, no, I'm not a doctor, Tori. I am not a doctor. No, no, me so neither. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I do believe it's a, a two-hour surgical procedure. Yeah, I mean it's quite a big deal. I would have thought. Mm. I don't think you just walk in. What do you do today? Oh, I've got a pacemaker. Yeah, at the GP. Went, yeah, went in with toothache. Came out of the pacemaker 15 yeah. minutes later, really easy. Bob's your uncle. Yeah. And he's fine. Mm. No, no, no sort of uh, after effects of that Mm-mm. little 
quick operation. No. It's so, okay, cool. So when he gets home, his yeah, his sex positive neighbor is uh, using a vibrator to dig holes to plant flowers in her garden. <laughs> so she's resourceful as well. Yeah, we should try it. Mm. We should probably all, tr- Might help. all try that. Probably like really gets the soil nice and fertile. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> uh, yeah, then we get a really another really lovely delicate gag when he mentions tonight he's not having Peking duck, he's having Peking chick, and we see the scalp mm. of a geisha on the kitchen countertop, mm. which is nice appropriation. Mm. <laughs> this is just awkward at this point. And it's it like gets better this, and better. But if they're you're, it's like they're on a sinking ship anyway, so they might as well just like go. Ah, yeah, get it all it. in there. Yeah. Get it all in yeah. there, I think. It's the best. <laughs> Why not? Rude not to, and, really. But the most anticlimactic finale ever. Randomly, like his mates from the building site just come over and he's dead. Yeah. On the floor. That's that's it. Yeah. That's like there's it no ends. lead up to no. this moment. And before that, you I'm just looking at my my notes. I'd also j- was wondering why the German doctor was playing darts. <laughs> I, I think that's quite a fun gag, though. Darts on the back of the door in a doctor's office. Because whenever a patient comes in, if they, they come in at the wrong him. time. Yeah. I mean, it's like a two-minute scene. And this guy playing the doctor is just like, gag, gag, gag. Let me show what I can do. Yeah. And so it feels it's like... It's a show reel, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like this is like a show he takes on the road already. And right, they and they just shoved him in. Oh, can you do in. that character, Dr. Wonderful? Yeah, 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 great. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I just, it was just quite a random thing to see a German mm. doctor playing darts out of nowhere. I was like, sorry? <laughs> um, I just, yeah, I've written, this is the most politically incorrect film. Mm. Why does the neighbour look like she's pissing herself? Like, what was the need? Oh, you, you know, when she's got that? the hose and she's, I'm like, why why do we need that? And then I've yeah. just said, I just have so many questions. Um, the black guy says he's an equal opportunity racist. Yes. I've just written, oh God. Because Yeah, because he's he's not um, he's not just k- killing one specific type of person. Yeah, yet. he kills black. The last one was obviously black, although we didn't see that. And then the black guy goes, he what well, he's been trying all of Donald's meat, hasn't he? Because there's enough That's to go right. around. And then they've just made this gag about equal opportunity, racist or whatever. And then the black guy's like, oh, this meat's the best. So I'm like, oh, right. So we're implying he likes the black meat the and most he says, because he's meat. black. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, of course. Oh, they couldn't right. just leave it there. They've now got to You're make right. the black man like the black meat and call it dark. Yeah, yeah, Lovely. yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Then I've said it's all getting a bit London Road with the prostitutes. <laughs> because like, London Road. out of nowhere though in it it was like he's now just <laughs> killing prostitutes there's that girl by the car and he's like get on in and I'm like oh okay oh, yeah. this is a thing now and he's in the paper for just killing prostitutes that yeah. was a bit random and then I've said why is this pretty neighbour lady always slightly hitting on him I'm hoping she is a cannibal but that didn't come off yeah. Um, I also had to notice the party attire, the blue suit and the pink hat and the frilly shirt and the shark tooth. Oh, that was I mean, wonderful. That was the, the workers come. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Also, the, my favourite line in the film, actually, I think the black guy says it. He said, I mean, it's a, it's actually quite quite a good line for once. He was like, I so see it, but I so don't believe it. Yes. That's, I, I really enjoyed, enjoyed that. that. Yeah, I thought that was quite good. And then I've said, so the microwave killed him, and that's what all this is about. Is it, is it a cautionary tale? About it, microwaves. We see the sign that says, caution, this machine may affect pacemakers. Yeah. So is it funded by Whirlpool? Maybe. Do they make, do they make, yeah, they do. I just looked up my microwave, it's Whirlpool. Yeah. Oh, is it? It's a double check. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess that, is that meant to be funny, though, that, the microwave well, because eventually we, kills him. Because we see May in the microwave at the end with her glowing eyes, I feel like oh, yeah. May kind of fucked with him all along. Like I feel like we're supposed to think like she knew that he'd get a pacemaker and the microwave would kill him. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> She's behind it all. Like yeah, yeah. because her her head at the end does seem to be alive. Because there is a bit earlier where it's moving around on its own mm. just randomly. Mm. Uh that head so, scene a lot, you know, as well. Like it's been, a, a, like I'm surprised she's still <laughs> so fresh. You know, well, yeah, that's well, well felt. Felt doesn't felt erode doesn't really, yeah, quickly. yeah, no, um, yeah. So the suggestion is that 
her head's alive at the end. I, I don't know. The micro, I mean, kind of halfway through the film, I was like, why has the microwave been given such a big part? Because it doesn't actually do anything, <laughs> but it's the namesake of the show, you know? So yeah. that was that was quite confusing to me. But then at the end, I'm like, okay, so the, so the microwave killed him. But I yeah. don't understand how that's, I don't understand how it's a Is microwave it, I, massacre. I mean, I guess mm. so. But microwave massacre implies that the microwave is like killing everyone or that we've killed loads of microwaves either way. But <laughs> <laughs> it, what it doesn't imply is that he would go around <laughs> killing people as a man, become a cannibal and put them in the microwave. And then the sometimes, mic- sometimes and then the microwave would kill him. That's yeah. not because of his pacemaker. It, it <laughs> I just don't. I have problems with the title. <sighs> yeah. And this, uh, it was, it's only like 76 minutes or something. Thank, Thank God. God. The original <laughs> cut, if both of us, the original was 90 no. something minutes. And they, they did say, um, but there were a couple of bits that felt slow. And I was like, oh, jeez, what only else a couple. did they have it? Yeah, right. Um, it's currently at the time of recording uh, 99p to rent on Prime, which yeah. is extortionate. <laughs> 99p, I'll never get back. <laughs> um but it's very different to chopping wall, obviously. Yeah, you um, really screwed me over there. I was, I was like, oh, <laughs> this is so fun. Oh, <laughs> I was like, less fun. It's still fun. It's an exploitation it, film, and um, that you know, I don't they hate are what they that. Are. I don't hate that I watched it. You know, like I, yeah. I would never really want to watch it again. But I, but I don't hate that I've seen it. Yeah, I think the the main problem for me, I love films that are bad and they're good because everyone's trying to be serious. Mm. The, what I doesn't land for me in this is everyone thinks they're a fucking comedian. Yeah. And so it's just a really cheap film where everyone thinks they're dropping these one-liners and it's going to be like, oh, 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 oh <laughs> I could eat a whore. Um, or are you going to, yeah, as you say, back pocket them all. But it's, yeah, it's this just constant stream of one-liners. And because of that, I'm like, what are you doing? Uh, yeah. You offensive middle-aged Terrible white men. Terrible people. <laughs> That's the thing you can't do i love like i there are a lot of comedy horror films that i that i love like even get out has got yeah, comedy yeah. in it you know and I, like i love that but that that's not how you do it you can't have mm-hmm. a bunch of terrible one liners <laughs> in a horror film where you're killing everyone you especially can't make them misogynistic offensive sexist one liners <laughs> when you're killing women like it's just it's just not okay on any level and I don't know I know it was the 70s but I'm like come on so one of you must have been like is this a bit <laughs> no no not then this was that's just they didn't ask those those conversations weren't happening, We're not happening. the thing is I kind of maybe could forgo some of it if it was like had more gore or more scares or something. Yeah, if it was good in any way. (laughs) (laughs) And on that... (laughs) (laughs) um, The thing is, I... I knew I wanted to cover this film mm. this because I own it and I'm not letting it go... That eight quid go to waste. I'm like, no, I've got to do something with this. Um, And I knew how terrible it was because I'd seen it before and I thought, (laughs) who can handle this? (laughs) (laughs) It's 70 minutes. It's not that much of a commitment. No. I'm going to give Tor a call. Fair. No, I, 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 yeah, I did enjoy it. Chopping Mall, I actually thought was good. That's the thing. Like, I actually yeah. did enjoy Chopping Mall. This one I thought was <laughs> shockingly bad. Yes. Um, but it's always a joy with you, Stevie. So, you know, yeah. I could, well, I've I had could a great take time it. Oh, yeah. I so have I. And I could handle it. I can take yeah. it. I'm glad. But thank you so much. Thanks for having and, uh, me. Who knows what I've got in store for you next time? Oh God! Yeah, I deserve uh, a good one next time. I totally no. You've you've I've, I've let you scrape the barrel now. Yeah, so can we alternate? Yeah, let's alternate <laughs> because I I need a day off. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do another uh, microwave master for a little bit. I would watch the sure. sequel though. Yeah, don't go in the oven. Yeah, I can't wait for I, that. I, I, I won't. Some sound <laughs> advice there. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> all right babe well thank you so much for doing that thank you. and um, i'll see you next time bye Frere Jacques, Frere Jacques, Dormez Vous, Dormez Vous. <laughs> bye, babe. Love you, bye. Thank you very much, Tori Alan Martin or Tori Alema Tin. Uh, yeah, next time I'll, <laughs> I'll have to get a better film um but yeah she's made of strong stuff so i knew she could handle it next week we're having a twofer that's a two for one for those who don't know and we will be covering stuart gordon's dolls and 1991's dolly dearest it's double dolly day and guest wise it's also a twofer i will be joined by mike munzer and becky dark to discuss these two killer dolly films so yeah you don't want to miss that one if you want to find us on the socials on twitter and letterboxd it's stevie's brain rot on instagram and facebook it's brain rot pod if you would like to email me maybe with some suggestions maybe just to troll me it's stevie's brain rot at gmail.com patreon as i said earlier is patreon.com forward slash stevie's brain rot and if you want to get some merch including our new metal af t-shirt go to steviesbrainrot.com Right, that's it then, Rotters, until next time. Toodles! Toodles!